Cowboys Hall of Famer, all-time leading rusher. Good to see Emmitt Smith. Look like you could give me maybe five carries right now. <laughs> One and a half. One carry. Maybe. What if when people see you in the street, first thing they say to you is what? Oh, I love the Cowboys, but I love you. Or they say, you were great on Dance with the Stars. Really? Yeah. Yeah. People ever cry meeting you? I've had that effect on folks sometimes. Really? Yeah. Like like Troy cries when he sees you or Michael no, Irvin? No, 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 no. Like real fans? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Real passionate fans. So they just go, oh, my God. And then they start crying? Some some people do. Really? Yeah. Did you have, what, what kind of... Why, why does that surprise you? Well, I don't know. I mean, some people get that passionate about their teams and their players uh, to where if they have a chance to meet someone like that, that they're passionate about, uh, the emotions just overflow sometimes. Did you ever... Of course, I never did that with you. No, 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 you didn't. Yeah. No. Um, somebody you met, did you ever cry? No. So you never were passionate about any or anything not like that not like that <laughs> no not like that okay but you have a whole new audience though that knows you as somebody who went on dancing with stars not running the football true true that is that show itself uh just created a, a bridge between sports and entertainment uh, a true bridge and uh, it's the one show that gave um 20 plus million people an opportunity to get a chance to see me up close and personal without a helmet on and to see me do something very challenging and uh, to see me go through the, the entire process of uh, transforming myself into a dancer. The competitor in you. Yeah. When did it emerge on Dancing with the Stars? Probably after Jerry Springer beat me with a, <laughs> <laughs> with a 20 and I had a 19 as a score. <laughs> Were you embarrassed? Yes. Yeah. I thought I did better than that. And, but, uh, you know, I fell at the bottom. And Jerry Springer, who's a great person, um, I mean, when he when I got beat by Jerry Springer, I said, something's not right. I got to go to work. <laughs> when you look at w what you were able to do mm -hmm. and look at and when's the last time? And I asked the same thing to Joe Montana, that you allow yourself to look back and go, wow. Like, I did a lot of, lot of things. And Joe said, I can go in his house. I don't find anything that's related to football. Do that, I, if I go into your house? You, you, you will see some things related to football, but it'll be up in the game room or something like that or in my theater room. Um, most of my football stuff is is tucked away. Um, you, matter of fact, you 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 see it a little bit more. But um, I haven't had a chance. Every now and then, um, you have a chance to reflect, or when someone asks, you go back and you think about your journey and uh, what you've been able to accomplish along that journey. And and you have the tendency to say, "Wow." I've done quite a bit, but I have more to do. <laughs> when you end your career, though, uh, Montana talked about he'd get depressed because you, you don't have anything to replace that, that feeling of being on a team and winning. And Did you go through that? No. Really? No. You were done, you were done. When I was done, I was done. I mean, at the end of the day, I, just, I was able to say to myself, I've done more than I ever thought I could do in the game of football, and I cannot give the game anymore. And, uh, and I was looking forward, truly, to starting a life outside the game and starting another journey. Now, that journey is, was never easy, don't get me wrong. Um, starting in a real estate company in 2005 and, and then um, growing into uh, the broker side of my business, what we do, uh, tenant rep business, and then starting a construction company in 2010, uh, I found my passion for my businesses just like I've had the same old passion and desires for sports. Um, and so, but uh, every morning, every day I get up, I'm excited about what new opportunities await. Uh, I mean, my companies and myself. Are you the best running back of all time? Uh, depends on how you define it. I mean, if you define it by stats, then the answer would be yes. If you define it by someone's personal opinion, the answer might be no, because everybody have their own opinion about what they perceive to be the best. But as a confidence, and this goes back to the conversation with Montana, he said, I feel like I'm the best quarterback of all time, but I have to, because that's how you play the right. game. That you, you, once you started, you got on the field, 
you had to feel like you were the best running back in the Yeah, when I was on the field, yeah. yes. Yes, when I was doing doing my thing, yes, I felt like I was the best running back in the league at the time. But um, I don't have to feel like that any longer. I mean, my career is over, and uh, I've done what I needed to do, and my stats speak for themselves. And and if that speaks for my body of work and and says that I'm the best, then that's what it is. But again, we're talking about how you define the best. Um that's a personal opinion. Is your record safe? For the time being, yes. <laughs> well, what's that mean? Yeah, you got to love these passing numbers, Emmett. Uh, the passing numbers are outstanding. Uh, the rushing numbers are, are diminishing. Uh, but, uh, you know, for the, for the time being, yes, it is safe. But how long it will be safe, I don't know. If you were in the league now playing, let's say you're in your prime, mm -hmm. how many yards are you rushing for? I may catch more balls than yeah, I, I might run <laughs> <laughs> in this league. Uh, but, you know, I, I think in this league, the way things are set up right now, it would be hard for me to be a 1,500 or 2,000-yard back. Of course, I was never 2,000-yard back, but to average 1,300 yards in this National Football League, to me, it should be a goal for every running back. And I think you can do that. Shouldn't every running back – 1,000 yards, is it? Is yeah. it that tough? Like, like you should get a thousand yards. Thousand yards is seventy-five yards a game. Yeah, and uh, and I think you should be able to get a thousand yards. Marshawn Lynch situation. We're talking to Emmett Smith, the Hall of Famer. Um, Marshawn Lynch just doesn't want to talk. Should he have to talk? That's helicopter coming. Meaning, by. I mean, he talks for six minutes, right? Yes. But, just, but the media responsibility is there an obligation that players have? I think there is an obligation to fulfill media requests. I think sometimes it's overblown because, first of all, these guys got in on Sunday. They spoke Sunday night. They spoke Monday. They spoke Tuesday, Wednesday, today. And every day, I don't think there's been a brand new question that these guys have not heard for the last five days. Yeah, but Marshawn, Marshawn's not talking. Everybody else is talking. But right, but everybody else is asking and answering the same question over and over and over and over again. And and at some point, when do you say enough is enough? When are you gonna come up with something new? We're not we're not terrorizing New York City, so you can't talk about that. Uh, you know, I felt bad for him. I I, I just. Because he didn't want to talk, and he had to just sit there, and, you know, now it became the media. It was a story about the media. Like, he won't talk to us, he's supposed to talk to us, and damn it, we want him to talk to us. Marshawn Lynch just doesn't, he doesn't have anything to say or doesn't want to say anything. He doesn't want to say, he want, to, he want his, his talking is on the football field. But do you respect that more than you do somebody who loves to just sit there and chat, chat it up with the media? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, check, check this out, Dan. You got Marshawn Lynch, and you have um, Sherman. Richard Sherman. You have Sherman. You have two extremes. Yeah. You're not happy with neither one of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're not happy with neither one. No, no, no Richard Sherman makes my job easier. <laughs> I mean, but the media is not happy with neither one. Yeah, and, and we so, like but, Sherman. But what you want to hear is, yeah, you know what? Peyton Manning is a great quarterback, and, you know, they have a great offense over there. Marsh, <laughs> uh, no Sean Moreno can run the rock. Demarius Thomas is a is a true one of the top five wide receivers in the game, if not the top number one. You know, it's going to be tough for us to stop that dump Bronco off. That's what you want to hear all week? No. <laughs> is that what you, that's what you're going to get? I, I'm going to take my chances that I'll get something. But, no, that's what you're going to get. But I like Richard if Sherman. If Marshawn opens his mouth, you, you're going to get uh, – He's not going to say anything. He's probably not going to say anything because he's probably taking the analogy of, you know, if you don't have anything positive to say, don't say anything at all. But I'm fine if he doesn't have anything to say. There's enough people. You're fine. Yes. But the rest of them. Well, but those are people who, you know, do your job and go to other people to get, get an answer. Get your sound bites. For. Yes. All you're doing is looking for a sound bite anyway. Yeah, I mean, work hard. You know, one quote that fits your story, whether your story is positive or negative. Yes. But did you, did you ever say anything that was inflammatory that you look back and you go, you I know. I mean, talking to you right now is kind of inflammatory. No, it's not. I mean, when you played, <laughs> did you ever say something where you go, ah, I shouldn't have said that? Uh, Anything yet during Super Bowls, media day? No, nothing. No, 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 no. Let's try to find something. No. Here. Try to find something. So Jerry Jones overrated as an owner. Overrated as a no, he's not. Oh, he's not, not overrated. So, okay. Just trying. Not as an owner, no. Okay. Would you ever say anything negative about the Cowboys? I have. Like what? I have in my past said 
The, I said the Cowboys would be a 7-9 team or an 8-8 team, and people got mad in Dallas. And they end up being pretty eight close. 8-8, eight, yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, I've said things that uh, I honestly believe was the right things to say, and, I, and I'm never trying to degrade the Dallas Cowboys because – I absolutely love the organization, and and I expect the organization to be at the top every year, just like every fan. But doesn't Jerry get in the way of Jerry? In the way of what? Jerry Jones gets in the way of Jerry Jones. Well, well sometimes, Dan, we get in the way of our own selves. But in the context of where, how you define and gets in the way of Jerry Jones. Jerry gets in the way of Jerry sometimes. Okay, so what does that mean? In the context of what we're talking about, we're talking about football. But what does that mean? He doesn't let people do their job. He doesn't let people do their job. In my opinion. So is Jerry calling the plays from the coordinator down to Jason that's going to be relayed over to Well, he's Tony bringing Roman? in the coordinator, offensive coordinator, who is helping Jason Garrett. Right. And then bringing another offensive coordinator, now another defensive coordinator, and then demoting Monty Kiffin. And you see where we go here. With right. Jerry. But all of that is is part of one reason why the Cowboys have been um, kind of going sideways. Um, and, and I don't think Jerry is making all of those decisions without talking to Jason or, or the coordinators first. You got to bring Jimmy Johnson back. That's not going to happen. <laughs> could, Jimmy, could Jimmy make them a winner again? Mm, probably not with the rules and everything that he has that, that, that's out there right now. I mean, these guys probably hit once a week, if that. I mean, back in my day, we were hitting, we had pads on two times a week. In some cases, if we didn't practice well, it was three times a week. That doesn't happen. He couldn't, he couldn't put up with that? No, he couldn't put up with it. Uh, you're uh, educated. Jimmy, Jimmy <laughs> believes in raising men, not allowing little boys to be little boys. So the Cowboys are little boys. I'm just saying. I ain't saying the Cowboys. I was just saying, too. I, I was just saying Jimmy. I wasn't talking about the Cowboys. I'm t you asked me about the league and. And could he coach in his league? And I'm just simply saying that's that would be the difference. By the way, McLovin called you a system running back. That is not exactly he, true. He, yeah, it's a direct I, quote. There's no way I could have been a system running back. He no, called, but I, he, I he, called Montana a system quarterback yeah, too. Yeah. I didn't, that doesn't mean you're not the greatest ever. No, no, I, I'm not worried about that anyway because <laughs> 18,355 says a lot. But, <laughs> but as far as a system running back. Everybody's a system player. Exactly. Because there's a system set there for everybody. So you're a system you running a back. System. Is Barry Sanders a system quarter, uh, system running back in the same way that you are, though? He's a system. There's a system for Barry <laughs> Sanders. There's a system for me. Period. There's a system for everybody. Everybody has to have some type of system, some type of organization structure in order to get everybody on the same page so they can do their job to, to the best of their ability. Now, Barry had a system that had like a... Um, they had like a run and shoot, so they spread everybody out, created space for Barry. My system was more tailored towards me. I grew up in Philadelphia, by the way, and I have a lot and of you anger. My wrath, I, have a, <laughs> yeah, believe me. I saw you system system the Eagles into many losses. Systematically so. destroy them. Yeah. Uh, tell us what you're doing with uh, Gout there, oh, well, uh, Emma. I want to get the plug in here. Again, again, Dan, I'm back again to spread more awareness about Gout and to let the eight million plus Americans know that they're not in this fight by themselves. And so gout is a severe form of arthritis that which I suffer from and have suffered from for the last three and a half years. And so today I can honestly say that uh, I feel very good. Uh, my doctor and I have a plan that we're working on right now. And I would encourage anyone out there to uh, that's suffering from any type of uh, suffering from gout or don't even know if you have gout uh, to go and get your uh, get a physical and allow your doctor to evaluate where you are and check your uh, uric acid levels and see where they are. And if they're normal, great for you. If they're not normal, then figure out which, what kind of program you need to be on in order to reduce those things so you can be gout uh, resistant, if you will, and not have any major flare-ups. The uh, website is goutsmart.com. Exactly. All right. You good? I'm, I'm good. I thought we went at it pretty good today, a little bit. I like that. I like when you're feisty. Uh, was I feisty? A little bit, yeah. You sure? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Where was I feisty at? I don't know. You just, you like, you know, you kind of, what, you want to stiff arm McLovin? No. Why would I want to stiff arm him? Because like, he said I was a system player? Yeah. Everybody's a system player. Okay, all right. I mean, you have a system right here. Yes. You lead, right? And they follow. Yes. That's a system, right? Yeah. 
I mean, this whole Super Bowl is a system, right? Yeah. The game has been played here. They everybody played all yeah. the NFC Championship games, and now they get a chance to come play in the big game. And now you have the media at the Big Apple. There's a big system. There's a big setup system right now. The police are around. They got blocked off. This. They set up a system. All right. So everybody's a system player. Uh, the great Emmett Smith, 20-year anniversary of Emmett's MVP Super Bowl performance against Really? The Bills. I did not know there that. There you go.